thing that has failed is that um, a lot of people who are working on technological solutions are trying to solve very specific problems and they solve them in a sort of, uh, either in an ivory tower in the case of academia, no offense uh, intended there, or in you know a very personal way for free software people. They have a specific thing they want to do and they do it. And very rarely is this cohesive and very rarely do those things go well together and sometimes they don't, um, they don't compose in a way that, that works well. Um, so if we think about the big picture, what, what Christian is talking about is a part of the big picture, but we need to think about it like, how would you build a dating site on a system like that? How would we make it so that it's integrated into daily life? How would we make it so that it became a part of the social functions that we actually have, so that we would use it naturally? How can we share music on it in, in, in a way? How can we actually use data centers in a way where we can get one property, let's say availability of that data, and we can prove that it's available. But then we can also decentralize it so that if it goes down, we don't actually lose access to our data. Um, I think to do this, we need free and open hardware, openly specified, freely available, free as in free software, free as in free hardware. We also need a free software operating system. So this is what the GNU project and the Free Software Foundation have been working on for longer than I've been alive. Um, these things are absolutely critical to do that. And one of the, the sort of key things to tie together all of this is, for example, cryptography. But another thing is about verifiability. So when you build software right now, if you compile, let's say, the Tor browser today, we have a new version of the Tor browser, which we're soon going to release. And it is a beta that you can test. If you compile it on your computer, or Richard compiles it on his computer, the actual resulting binary is identical. And this is because we want to make sure that if someone downloads a binary of the Tor browser from us, that they will actually have the same one that they would build from source. And then many people around the world can sign the hash um, of the actual thing that we think we are releasing. And then there's no reason to just trust us. You can build it from source and make sure it's identical. And then you don't have to have, um, for example, the uh, ability to do uh, disassembly or decompile uh, any parts of the object code and then if you have all the source code you can see what actually is the result. So that kind of verifiability, we need that also for hardware. We need a way to openly look, to openly specify and freely specify a board, sort of like the stuff that Sebastian has been doing, and then to be able to take a random board, x-ray the board, and make sure that it matches. And we need software to do that so that we can actually look at the board and see that it does what we think it does. And then we need to be able to take the source code and do the equivalent of that so that we can actually verify it. And that will be very hard to accomplish for entire operating systems. Um, but when we have these kinds of systems, it really, I think, gives us some great opportunities. And I think it's, I mean, it allows us to say, hey, is there a backdoor in this CPU? Well, we can inspect the source code for the entire CPU because it's written in VHDL or something like this, and then it's loaded into an FPGA, and we know this FPGA has certain features, and we can identify them with an x-ray to see that, in fact, those features are there. And you can pay someone to reverse engineer a particular board to shave it down to make sure that it does have what we think it does. So if we, if we apply that all through and through, it means that these things become more accessible, or at least they become verifiable. And at least we have some way to sort of trace through the entire picture. And then with cryptography, we can link up with other systems like this, and we can have applications on top that people actually care about. And so then it's not a, a, a house of cards, let's say. Because at, at the moment, we have a lot of free software, and it sits on top of um, non-free hardware. And if I was a betting man, um, and I am often, um, you know, I would say that that's a problem. I wouldn't exactly say why, but I guess there's plenty of stuff that shows that it is a problem, but I would say that it's a problem. I think that Sebastian has convinced me of this. That's pretty much my main reason for believing that, in case there was any question about that. But looking at, at, at for example, Intel CPUs with the microcode updates, those appear to be signed with a 2048-bit RSA key. Well, if Intel is an American company, and Intel has the ability to push out microcode updates to the CPU, and they sign them, and you actually fetch them over HTTP, I might add, without any encryption, um, what does that tell you? It means you, even if you shave the chip down, um, it would be possible for them to just load in some microcode to change the way your CPU works, and when your machine powers off, it goes away. So we need to, we need to be able to understand the edges of those things, and 
in, right now, I think we actually just can't do that very well at all. And that's a really big problem. And I mean, there's literally one person in the world, maybe two people in the world, that are really working on this in, open, uh, in, in the open. One of them is Bunny, who created the Chumbi and is working on an open laptop. That open laptop, I think, is a key project because when we have an actual open and free laptop, we can use that to build other things. So for example, he's also, on his blog, he documented that he's working on a router. So that's a really fantastic thing because it means that with those two devices, we move closer towards having the free hardware and free software reality where we don't have to trust a corporation to give us some binary blob and to keep us secure or to hold a key. And then that key, of course, who knows who else has it. Right? If I were guessing how the business records uh, provisions um, for the NSA works, I would guess that they can probably ask companies for things that they consider to be uh, relevant business records. And if they think your data is a relevant business record, I suspect that things that impact the integrity of your data will be the same. So I think the big, big picture is that we need to think 30, 40, 50 years out into the future. The way that, the, the way that Richard Stallman thought about free software, I suppose, in the beginning, I wasn't there, I wasn't even born, but uh, to think in the big picture, not about freedom as in very small scope freedom, but freedom as in the big freedom, the freedom, liberty, to be at liberty. And, and that's really the core, I mean, in my, in my opinion, the core of why free software is such a radical idea for a lot of people is that it's not just about software. It's about the ends that the software bring into the world and about what people end up being when they have free software versus when they have proprietary software. And so the same is true, I think, for hardware. And I think when we have these things, we have the, the sort of grounding, the underpinning for a much freer society or free societies over the entire planet. And we're never going to get off this planet and, ex and explore space if we don't solve a lot of these problems at home, I think. And uh, I want to die on Mars, but not when we land, I think is the, <laughs> is the phrase. Um, so I'm hoping we can really have free systems like this and we can really normalize understanding them and fab them but also to study them and to change them in the case of software. And in the case of systems that are built on FPGAs, we may be able to dynamically change the hardware by having software. So the thing we need to fab is a very simple thing, and the ability to change that thing becomes a matter of changing software. So a software-defined radio, for example, that uses an FPGA is a really, really incredible and powerful tool. So we can have a use for it today, and in 10 years you can literally change it to do something else that the original designer didn't think of. So it really gives us the ability to hack the planet, sorry for the pun, but really it allows us to do stuff that we can't really do right now. Um, coincidentally, the router that Bunny is building has a Spartan 6 FPGA inside of it. So it's clear that other people have this, this line of thinking, and I think that's really brilliant. And I wanted to just sort of encourage that and to see the big picture of tying it together. And I think that we can self-fund almost all of this. We don't need the state. We usually don't need the state. I know that most Europeans love the state, and I like your state too right now. But, um, you know, an, an individual's alliance with the state is a temporary one, right? And the state decides when they want to end it, and you usually don't have much of a choice. I say that as someone who is currently applying for a visa in Germany. So, um, you know, sometimes states don't do the right thing. So it would be great if we can find a way to economically finance this in a way where the state's power is removed from the equation for the most part, in terms of sustainability. But maybe in the beginning, some of the funding comes from the state, because right now the state is, in fact, friendly. So the fact that Christian Grutoff doesn't have $2 billion in research grants is understandable, because it's hard to understand these big concepts. And yet, at the same time, when the economic espionage cost is in the billions of euros, one has to wonder why we're not investing in thinking of these solutions, um, and really actually trying to understand these spaces. Because a lot of these things are really hard to comprehend, but also to solve. So we really need to be working on that. So if you have any interest in these things at all, even just a passing one, you should really come and talk with Christian or myself or other people that are working on these things because I think this is a, a good 40-year re research problem, and if you only put five minutes into it, it's very appreciated. Um, and, and the end result, I think, is that we can really have a much freer planet, and individually we will be more free, which is, I think, worth doing. And I think the outcome of not doing this is, pretty, is, is likely to be quite tragic. And you can see this, for example, with people that are stuck with Apple-related uh, hardware and software, because you'll see that they want to change certain things and they are unable to do that, or they want to reprogram and repurpose their devices, 
with free software, for example, the Tails uh, bootable live CD, which helps to Torify all the things you do on your computer, boots into Debian. It'll probably work on this laptop in front of me, but Apple has changed their newer hardware so that it doesn't, it doesn't work anymore. It wasn't because of Tails that they made this change, but it's very, very difficult to make Tails work on this, and now we'll have to do substantial engineering changes to Tails to make that work. Well, if the core of the system was core boot, instead of this garbage EFI stuff that has been forced down our throats, um, that maybe would be a different outcome. Uh, maybe it would be exactly the same, but I think it would be different. And, and so we really need to look at, at, at replacing these kinds of things and also think about it as being not actually so sexy. I mean, they have great design, but it is the aesthetic of slavery in a sense, where you are not free. You are only free to do what Apple says. And it isn't just Apple, it's Microsoft, it's Google, it's other places. And a lot of people are locking these things down. And so we need to work on building alternatives. And I think the best way to do that is to actually figure out what we want to do when we have any system at all. And then we will actually be able to start to build those alternatives that will respect our freedoms with free software and with free and open hardware. And hopefully we can freely communicate and freely read when we have anonymity systems and we distribute and decentralize in a secure way. So that was a whole lot. I had a mate. Thank you. So, um, <laughs> I, I just wanted to say, if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. I also want to make a comment about X keyscore, if any of you are interested in that.